Hello, and welcome to Edupedia World. In the previous chapter, we had focused on appraising employees' performance. And after appraising performance, a manager typically needs to deal with several issues. Now, the employee may require coaching as well as career advice and mentoring. And the manager and employer may want to review the employee's performance in the context of the company's overall talent management needs. Now, in this particular chapter, we are going to uh, learn more about effective uh, coaching and mentoring employees and also how to support their career planning needs. Now, let us define what coaching means and what mentoring means and what the difference between the two are. Now, great supervisors tend to be great coaches because they bring out the best in their employees. Coaching and the closely related mentoring are thus very important supervisory skills. Now, coaching means uh, educating, instructing, and training subordinates, whereas mentoring means advising, counseling, and guiding. Now, coaching is a task-oriented approach. The focus is on concrete issues, such as managing more effectively, speaking more articulately, and learning how to think strategically. And this requires a content expert or a coach who is capable of teaching the coachee how to develop these skills. Now, mentoring, on the other hand, is a relationship-oriented approach. It seeks to provide a safe environment where the mentoree shares whatever issues affect his or her professional and personal success. Although specific learning goals or competencies may be used as a basis for creating the relationship, its focus goes beyond these areas to include things such as work-life balance, self-confidence, self-perception, and how the personal influences uh, the professional. Uh, the other difference is that coaching is short term and a coach can successfully be involved with the coachee for a short period of time, maybe even just a few sessions. The coaching lasts for as long as is needed depending on the purpose of the coaching relationship. Now, mentoring uh, to be successful requires time in which both partners can learn about one another and build a climate of trust that creates an environment in which the mentor can feel secure in sharing you know, the real issues that impact his or her success. And successful mentoring relationships last nine months to a year. Coaching is uh, performance driven. Now the purpose of coaching is to improve the individual's performance on the job. And this involves either enhancing current skills or acquiring new skills. And once the coachee successfully acquires the skills, the coach is no longer needed. Uh, mentoring, on the other hand, is development driven. It is, uh, its purpose is to develop the individual and uh, not only for the current job, but also for the future. So this distinction differentiates the role of the immediate manager and that of the mentor. It also reduces the possibility of creating conflict between the employee's manager and the mentor. Right. So, moving on. Uh, now, coaching and mentoring uh, both require analytical and interpersonal skills. And they require analysis because it's futile to teach or advise someone if you don't know what the problem is. And uh, they also require interpersonal skills because it's equally futile to know the problem if you can't get the person to listen or change. So managers rely on coaching and mentoring for some of their most important duties. So for example, you will need coaching and mentoring skills when appraising employees. And coaching is crucial for on-the-job training. So we saw that many firms use executive coaches to improve their top manager's performance. And you may have to mentor a new employee to learn the ropes. And firms like AT&T assign mentors to those employees they send abroad to ensure expatriates' uh, careers stay on track while they're gone. And employers understand that coaching and mentoring are important. 
basically one uh, consulting firm surveyed about 2500 senior human resource and uh, training and development managers to see what their training programs offered and the survey found that the top skills their firm's development programs taught were coaching a performance problem uh, the thing that came second uh, in the agenda was communicating performance standards and uh, coaching a development opportunity, which is followed by conducting a performance appraisal. So coaching does not mean just telling someone what to do. We can best think of coaching in terms of a four-step process. Uh, so the, what is shown on the slide are the four steps, which is preparing to coach, planning, active coaching, and follow-up. So preparation means understanding the problem, the employee, and the employee's skills. Your aim here is to formulate a hypothesis about what the problem is. Now preparation is partly an observational process. You will have to watch the employee to see what he or she is doing and observe the workflow and how co-workers interact with the employee. So in formulating your hypothesis, uh, it would be helpful to apply the ABC approach, which is the antecedents, behavior, and consequences approach. So the basic idea of ABC is that poor skills and motivation don't always explain poor performance. And faced with a performance problem, first review the antecedents, uh, which means those things that come before the person does the job. Does the, uh, does the employee know what the performance standards are? Or does he or she know um, now? Um, does, she, does he or she know that they're not being met? Um, next, review the employee's behavior. Here, particularly ask: Could this person do the job if he or she wanted to? So, for example, was the training adequate? Does the person have the necessary aptitude? Does he or she have the tools and raw materials to do the job? And finally, think through from the employee's vantage point, the consequences of doing the job right. Do you reward the person for doing well? Might there be negative consequences like complaints from peers for performing to standard? So, you know, even though the employee has all the skill sets and is motivated enough to, um, I mean, has understood what the performance standards are, but if, it's, if he or she is unmotivated enough or if um, the company or the organization doesn't reward the employee accordingly, then that could uh, also lead to uh, an issue. Uh, the next step is planning. So this perhaps is the most powerful way to get someone to change. Um, and um, so to get someone to change is to obtain his or her enthusiastic agreement on what change is required. And this requires reaching an agreement on the problem and on what to change. So um, getting an agreement on these items require all the interpersonal communication skills that you can muster. The next point is active coaching. Um, now with an agreement on a plan, you can start the actual educating, instructing and training, uh, which is basically coaching. And here you are in a sense in the role of a teacher. And your toolkit will include what you learned about on-the-job training, uh, which we had discussed in the previous chapter. Uh, however, interpersonal communication skills are the heart of effective coaching. Um, finally, uh, once you've you know followed through all of these steps, uh, the final step would be to follow up. So bad habits sometimes re-emerge and it's therefore necessary to observe, re-observe the person's progress periodically. Now moving on to uh, career development. <clears throat> now, uh, the various roles in a career development are uh, from an in individual's role a manager's role and what an employer's role is. So let's start with what an employee's role is. So although the employer and the manager have roles in guiding employees' careers, no employee should ever abandon this task to others. 
So for the employee, career planning means matching individual strengths and weaknesses with the occupational opportunities and threats. So basically, everybody wants to pursue occupations, jobs, uh, and a career that capitalize on their interests, skills, and values. So he, he or she would also want to choose occupation or jobs that make sense in terms of projected future demand, right, for various types of occupations. Because, uh, you know, there was a time where, you know, being a computer engineer or a systems analyst was a ticket to success. But then today, uh, that's no longer the case. So that is also something which, you know, employee, employers uh, want to think of when they plan their career. Um, then we have the uh, manager's point of view, right? So it's hard to overestimate the impact that a supervisor can have on his or her employee's career development. And with little or no additional effort uh, than realistic performance reviews and candid career advice, a competent supervisor can help the employee get on and stay on the right career track. The other extreme and uncaring or unsupportive supervisor may look back on years of having inhibited his or her employee's career development. So whether or not the employer has a career development program, the individual manager can do several things to support his or her subordinate's career development needs. So for example, when the subordinate first begins his or her job, make sure that he or she gets off to a good start and schedule regular performance appraisals and at these reviews focus on the extent to which the employee's current skills and performance are consistent with the person's career goals. And keep the subordinates informed about how they can utilize the firm's current career-related benefits and encourage them to do so. Now, from an employer's uh, point of view, Employers' career development efforts range from simple to comprehensive. So for example, job postings and tuition reimbursement plans are simple ways to support employees' career development needs. At the other extreme, many firms um, have comprehensive formal programs. Now, Sun Microsystems, which is now part of Oracle, uh, maintains the career development centers staffed by counselors and uh, they help employees fill development gaps and choose appropriate career opportunities. And this program helps explain why its average employee tenure of four years is more than twice that estimated at other Silicon Valley firms. Now, other employee career efforts include career centers, career workshops. Uh, career centers may include a web-based or offline library of career development materials, career workshops, uh, and workshops on related topics. And um, career planning workshops is a planned learning event in which participants are expected to be actively involved, uh, completing career planning exercises and inventories and participating in career skills practice sessions. A typical workshop includes a self-assessment, an environment assessment, and goal setting and action planning segments. Uh, now, there was a survey that uh, was done, and the researchers studied 524 organizations in the UK to determine how they use 17 career management practices. So posting job openings was the most widespread practice, and the other top career practices in descending order were formal education, career-oriented performance appraisals, uh, counseling by managers, um, developmental moves, counseling by HR, retirement preparation, and succession planning. Now, some of the most uh, innovative career initiatives. So, some of some employers out there have used um, in innovative career development initiatives. Uh, and uh, some of them which I'm going to just uh, speak about uh, right now. So one is the lifelong learning budgets. Uh, we, had, we had spoken about training uh, in the previous chapter. And uh, several employers, including IBM, now provide a 401k type lifelong learning account for their employees. 
and both employers and employees contribute and the employees can tap into these to get the career related education and development they desire now in indian firms the approach is a bit different all the learning related expenses are generally borne by the employers another initiative is role reversal here we have employees temporarily work in different jobs in order to develop a better appreciation for their occupational strengths and weaknesses uh then we have something known as organize career success teams so here small groups of employees meet periodically to support one another in achieving their career goals and uh, some firms are also provide career coaches so for example uh, all america um fund financial corp hired 20 career development coaches to assist its 850 person information technology staff and the coaches helped individual employees identify their development needs and obtain the training professional development and networking opportunities that they need to satisfy those needs and career coaches generally help employees create one to five year plans showing what their careers with the firm may lead and then the employer and the employee base the latter's development plans on what he or she will need to move up another initiative was to offer online programs so for example workforce vision vision from uh, criterion inc supplies online systems that help the employer analyze an employee's training needs so clicking on the employee's name it launches his or her work history his or her competencies career path and other information so for each competency say for example leadership right a bar chart graphically shows a gap analysis highlighting the person's strengths and weaknesses and then the firm can organize developmental activities around the person's needs now managing the new workforce right um <clears throat> women and men face different challenges as they advance through their careers and women report greater barriers such as being excluded from informal networks uh than do men and uh, greater difficulty getting developmental assignments and geographic mobility opportunities so women have to be more proactive to get such assignments so given all of this the most important thing the employer and manager can do is to take the career needs of women and minority employees seriously so some of the steps uh that uh, can be taken right uh is one is the to eliminate institutional barriers so many practices such as uh you know where it's required for late night meetings this may seem gender neutral but in fact it is disproportionately affects women and minority uh improve networking and mentoring so to improve female employees networking opportunities a merit international instituted a series of leadership conferences for women and speakers offered practical tips for career advancement and shared their experiences so more important the conference provided informal opportunities over lunch for instance for the married women to meet and forge business relationships another step that can be taken is to abolish the glass ceiling so eliminating glass ceiling barriers requires more than an order from the ceo because the problem is usually systematic and as one expert puts it the roots of gender discrimination are built into a platform of work practices cultural norms and images that appear unbiased so people don't even notice them let alone question them and these range from the late night meetings mentioned earlier to golf course memberships uh another step that can be taken is to adopt flexible career tracks so in flexible promotion ladders such as you must work 8 years of 70 hour weeks to apply for partner can put women who often have more responsibility for child raising uh responsibility at a disadvantage 
and in many large um, accounting firms for instance more men successfully logged the dozen or so years normally needed to apply for a position as partner but few women stuck around so fewer applied for or earned these prize positions so one solution is to institute career tracks including reduced hours and more flexible year round work schedules that enable women to periodically reduce their time at work Uh, but remain on a partner track. Now, moving on to talent management, which is the last phase of this chapter. So, what is talent management? Right. So, talent management is and is an automated end-to-end process of planning, recruiting, developing, managing, and compensating employees throughout the organization. now because uh, talent management involves recruiting hiring and developing high potential employees it requires coordinating several human resource activities in particular work acquisition assessment development and retention in simplest terms talent management simply refers to the process of attracting selecting training developing and promoting employees through an organization but then again the main thing driving talent management movement is the availability of two new talent management information systems so this particular slide would explain more about talent management systems and talent management is in the sense career management from the employer's point of view the employee wants to align his or her skills training performance feedback and development in such a way to have a successful career the employer for its part wants to integrate the same functions to ensure that it is using its corporate uh, talent in the best possible way so if talent management is executed correctly it can have a strategic impact on an organization and good talent management uh, involves um much more than simply attracting developing and retaining talent the human resources function is a patchwork of several specialty functional areas of expertise each requiring a solid understanding and discipline and these functional areas are typically considered to be these pillars that you see on your screen so to manage talent successfully all these silos need to be fully integrated and have to work together so at first workforce and succession planning defines future talent needs by quantity and quantifying qualifying needs according to the business strategy of an organization and performance management delivers an overview of the already existing talent while talent acquisition and recruiting should close the identified gaps in the talent map talent acquisition um and talent uh, acquisition should also include areas like employer branding now as a best practice it is highly recommended that uh, companies use the support of an rpo firm for the talent acquisition considering the specialized nature and expertise rpo providers use for finding the best external talent in a competitive market a uh, learning and development program should coach and train existing talent to become the future leaders of an organization who are able to use their talent to deliver excellence and performance in line with all of these programs there has to be an effective compensation policy and high performance talent requires an adequate compensation package which demonstrates that their commitment and accomplishments achieved results is also being acknowledged through monetary benefits so we've actually discussed uh, all of these pillars uh, except for compensation management uh, which we would be covering in the next session it is a huge chapter and uh, we would have about 3 uh, or four sessions on compensation so thank you so much for tuning in and i hope you enjoyed the session Have a good day.